Hello everybody, this is Basim with Join the Graph. And in this video, I'm going to explain how you can extend the Gremlin Traversal language by creating domain-specific language or a DSL using C Sharp. So what are DSLs? DSL is short for domain-specific language. And DSLs are custom extensions to the Gremlin Traversal language. So if you're not satisfied with the standard Gremlin steps like in and out and project and group, if you're not satisfied with these basic lower level steps, um, and you'd like to define your own higher level steps that are specific to your application domain, you can do that by creating a Gremlin DSL. So Gremlin DSLs are comparable to SQL stored procedures in that both of them are functions that encapsulate data access logic. But the big difference is that the SQL stored procedures are usually defined on the server side, while the Gremlin DSLs are usually defined on the client side and the server doesn't know anything about them. So um, your client will translate these domain-specific steps to the standard Gremlin steps before sending them to the Gremlin server. So when will you want to use the Gremlin DSLs? Well, you, you can use it to create a whole new language based on Gremlin. It will be probably be a higher level language that is specific to your domain. For example, if you're working on a family tree application, maybe you'll want to define steps like grandfather to navigate from the current vertex to its grandfather. Or maybe you'll want to define um, a step called siblings to navigate from the, from the current vertex to its siblings. And maybe you will cover the Gremlin traversal language completely so that your clients don't have to call the standard Gremlin steps and instead they only call your, your domain-specific um, language. But you don't really have to go this far. You don't have to completely cover Gremlin and you don't have to create an entire new language. Maybe you'll just notice that you often use two Gremlin steps together and you'll decide to combine these two steps into some higher level steps just to make navigating the graph a little bit more convenient. And maybe it will be a general purpose step that's not bound to any particular domain. And this is actually what I'll do in this video. Um, I find that sometimes the standard Gremlin projection syntax it doesn't really work for me, calling project and then calling the by step modulator. Sometimes it doesn't work very well for me for my applications. So I'd like to create another step that's called project by. And I can call it instead of calling project and then calling the by step modulator. I believe it provides a better syntax for some scenarios. So I will show you how to create this um, custom step in the C-sharp application and how to use it in my C-sharp application. So let's go ahead and create a new C-sharp console application, say .NET new console. And the first thing I'll do to this console application, I'll add the gremlin.net NuGet package. So I say .NET add package and the package name is gremlin.net okay now i'll open program.cs and first thing we need to do here we need to um, create the gremlin client and create the graph traversal source so i'll copy some code that does that And I will need to add some namespaces. So this is how you create the Gremlin client and the graph traversal source in a C-sharp application. First, you need to create a Gremlin server and specify the host name and the port number. And then you create a Gremlin client based on this server. And then you create a driver remote connection using this Gremlin client. And then you create an anonymous traversal source and configure it to use this driver remote connection. And that's how you get your graph traversal source, your G object. And this graph traversal source, it can be used to access and traverse the graph. 
So now that we have our graph traversal source, let's populate the graph with some data. So again, I have a function that does that. I'll copy it. And this is the function that will populate the graph with some sample data. You will see it, it takes the graph traversal source and then it adds a post vertex and sets some properties on this vertex. And then it will create three comment vertices and it will set the properties of the comments. And then it will add an edge, a has comment edge that goes from the post to the comment. So that's our function. Let's call it to fill our graph with data. And before running the program, I need to start the Gremlin server. Now that the Gremlin server is running, I'll run this application. Okay, so the program finished running successfully. Now I want to use some visualization tool to see if my graph was filled with data as expected. So I use a tool called GraphExp. It's a very simple client application, browser-based application, and connects to the server running, the Gremlin server running on localhost port 8182. I'll just click on search and should get the data. Perfect. So I have a post vertex right here, and I have three comment vertices. And these comments, or this post, has an edge that connects it to the comments, and the edge label is has comments. Perfect. So this is our data, and we'll be traversing this data. Okay, first thing I want to try traversing this graph using the standard project syntax. And after that, I'll show you what I have against the standard pro project syntax, and we will define an alternative uh, project function or project step. So again, I'll copy a function that gets the post and its child comments using the standard project syntax. Okay, so I have a function here that says the name is get post using standard project. And again, it has to take the graph traversal source. And it calls g.v to get all the vertices. Then it, it filters the vertices by the one having the label post and the slug post one. This will get us this, um, this post vertex right here. And then we will project and that's the standard project syntax. Project takes a list of keys. These are the projection keys. And then we call the by step modulator. For each of the keys, we have to call the by step modulator to specify where the value um, of this key will come from. So again, that's for the slug, the value will come from the slug property. And for published DON, the value will come from a property named published DON, and so on. <clears throat> and for the commas, this one is a little bit more complex because it's not just a scalar value that we want to get. We want to get the comments that are related to this post. So to get the comments, uh, we will call this by modulator, and then we will spawn an anonymous traversal, and we will go out from the current uh, vertex along the has comment edge. And then, um, well, first let's, let's try to visualize this a little bit more. So we will start on this post vertex and then this anonymous traversal will go out from the current vertex to uh, these comment vertices. It will go out along the has comment edge and we will have three gremlins on these three comment vertices. And each of these gremlins will execute a project step, this time to get the properties of the, of the comment. So these are the projection keys, 
And again, for each of the keys, we need to call the by step modulator to specify where the value will come from. The value of username will come from the value of the property username and the title will come from the value of the property title. And then we have to fold the results of this anonymous traversal. Because if we don't fold, um, it will just get the first result of this anonymous traversal and we'll place it under the comments key. We don't just want to get the first result, we want all the results of this anonymous traversal. And that's why we have to call fold at the end. This will assign all three comments or we'll get all three comments and place them under the comments, under the comments key. And finally, we have to call the next um, step, the next terminal step to actually send this traversal to the server and get the results. And this will get us an I dictionary of string objects. The strings will be the projection keys that you see here, and the objects will be the projected values. Like some of them will be scalar values like the slug and the author and the published on, and some of them will be more complex values, like the value of the comments. It will be it will be a list of dictionaries. We'll have a dictionary for each of the comments. So yeah, that's the return type. It's a dictionary of string object. So let's try calling this function and we will see if we get the expected result. I'll first comment this function because we already got, we already populated the graph. And then I'll assign the results of, of this function to a variable and let's call it, um, projection results. So I'll call this function and I'll assign the return, what, what we will get from this function to the variable projection results. And I'll set a breakpoint here so we can see the data and the projection results, whether it's the data we expected or not. So now I will run my application. And it hit the breakpoint. So let's see these projection results. First, we have a dictionary that has key value pairs. It has the ID zero, the slug post one, the author, author one. These are the properties of the post vertex. And then we have this complex property here, the comments property. Again, this is a key value pair. The key is a simple string, comments, but the value is a list of dictionaries. We have a dictionary for each of the comments. And the dictionary has key value pairs for the comment properties. So the comment has the property ID that's equal to 14 username and posted on and title and so on. So we got the scalar property successfully and we got um, the results from this nested traversal successfully. When we traversed out to the comments and projected by the comment properties, we got all the data that we needed. Perfect. So the standard the standard projection syntax seemed to be working as expected. But now I'll tell you what I have against it. Um, it works well when, or it looks good when, um, you have a short list of properties. You're, you're projecting by a small number of items. But when this list grows too long like that, and you have to call by for each of the projection items, and you see the key is a little bit too far from the value or from the value source. And if you decide to add, you know, to, to add another projection item, you'll have to add it here and place the buy at the right place under publish done. So I do not find this very readable or very maintainable. It works, but it doesn't look the best, especially when you're projecting by a large number of items. So I want to create an alternative um, projection function that will take a dictionary of key value pairs. The keys will be the, the keys that we have here, the projection keys, and the values will be the traversals that are the value sources where the value will come from. Like that, the key will be right next to the value. 
So let's go ahead and create this, this domain-specific language. I'll first create a folder, and I named the folder Gremlin Extensions. So our extension methods will be placed under a folder and under a namespace called Gremlin Extensions. And I will create a class. I'll call it Graph Traversal Extensions. Again, I'll copy the implementation of this, of this class from here. Okay, so here is how you define domain-specific languages in C Sharp. Um, you need first, you need a static class, and then your domain-specific language is implemented as extension methods to the graph traversal of SE. That's the class you want to extend, because that's the class that's returned by the has step and then generally by all the by most of the standard gremlin steps. The return, for example, has it returns a graph traversal of vertex vertex. So this is the class that you want to extend, <clears throat> graph traversal of SE. Like that, you will be able to call your custom DSL function, you'll be able to call it on the result of the has step. So you can, um, you can use the same fluent API um, some of these steps will be the standard gremlin steps, and some of them will be your own domain-specific steps. So that's our project by function. It extends graph traversal of SE, and it will return another graph traversal with the project and the by steps added to it. And it takes a dictionary, the projection map. This dictionary will have the key value pairs. The keys are the projection keys that you see here, and the values will be the value sources. So again, that's that's um, like um, a usual signature for any functions that adds a gremlin step. It needs to take a traversal, an input traversal, and will add a step to it and return an output traversal. And here, this one takes a map, the, um, the keys and the values for the projection. And the function starts by validating the arguments. It needs to make sure that the input traversal is not null, the projection map is not null, the projection map has at least one item. And then it will just call a bunch of um, standard gremlin steps to add steps, because this, this step that we're defining, it's actually can be broken down to multiple standard gremlin steps. And that's like we're basically defining a higher level language, but it translates to the lower level standard gremlin. So our project by function, it will call the standard project function. This is the same project, project function that we are calling here. It's called inside this function. So it will call project. And if you remember from here, project takes a list of keys. So we will pass a list of keys to the project function. And these keys are, are the keys of the map that we received as argument. And after calling project, we will iterate over this projection map, the key value pairs of the projection map. And for each of the projection items, we will call the by step modulator. And if if um, this key value pair does have a value, does have um, a traversal value, we will use this traversal value. We will pass it to the by modulator. If no traversal value is provided, if they just specify a key and do not specify a value for this projection item, then we will assume that the value will come from a property that has the same name as the projection key. So this will save us from having to, you know, specify the same name twice, like slug and slug and author and author and publish done and publish done. Our own domain-specific function, it will assume that if no value is provided, if no value source is provided, it will assume that the value will come from a property that has the same name as the projection key. And finally, it will return this output traversal. So we took an input traversal, 
we added a few gremlin steps to it and we returned the output traversal with the additional steps. So this was the implementation of project by. Um, I really wanted to add another overload of the project by function. This one will be a little bit easier to call because this project by function takes a type argument E2. And this type argument is the type of the values of the dictionary. But very often, you don't know what's the type of the values of the dictionary because you see here you're projecting by multiple properties and these properties have different or have values of different types, right? Like the slug is a string, the ID is a long, the published done is a date. So it's very unlikely that all the values that you're projecting by will be of the same type. That's why with the standard project uh, function, you often have to specify object as your values type, unless all your unless all your value all the values that you're projecting by are of the same type, which is unusual, I think. So that's why I created the second overload. This saves the caller from having to specify the type of the values that we're projecting by. It just assumes that the, the type of the values will be objects. So this step will return a dictionary of string object. The keys are strings and the values can be anything really. So we have to use the type object here. And this will delegate the implementation to this project by function that we defined here earlier and will return the results of the project function and the project by function and will specify object as the type argument for this project by function here. So if you know the type of your values, of the, your dictionary values, you can use this overload, say, okay, all my values will be strings. But in the more common case where you're projecting by multiple properties that have different types, then you will use this overload which is a, which will add a step that takes the start and by the way s stands for start the start type and e stands for the end type so in this this traversal that we're returning it will have an end type of i dictionary of string object string because the keys are always strings object because we don't know the type of the of the values of this dictionary Okay, so here are our two functions. These are two um, extension methods to the Gremlin traversal of SE class. So they can be called on the result of has or, or even on, on the result of out. You can call this project by function and it will add a project step. Sorry, it will add the project step and it will add a bunch of by step modulators. Other than extending the graph traversal of SE, there is something else we need to do. See here how you're calling the out. Maybe you will want to, sp to um, spawn an anonymous traversal using the project by step, just like you spawned an anonymous traversal here uh, using the out step. With the standard project, you can, you know, call from this double underscore class and then call the project the standard gremlin project function so i want to have um, our project by step i wanted to make it possible to spawn the project by step from an anonymous traversal so we need to create a static uh, method just like this out method or the project method so to do this, um, we need to find where will we place our, um, our project by static method. We cannot extend the double underscore class because this is a static class and in C-sharp you cannot add extension methods to a static class. So what we need to do here is we need to create our own static class and we will add the project by function to this static class. So I will do this right now and I will call the static class, I'll call it double underscore EXT. And again, I have the implementation of the static class here. Mm -hmm. 
you'll see it's a static class with a few static methods inside it. And again, this static class will be used to spawn anonymous traversals that have the project by step. So again, the name of the function is project by. It takes um, it takes a dictionary that has the projection map, just like the projection map we were receiving here, and it will return an anonymous traversal of object and dictionary of string e2. So what this function will do, it will create an anonymous, uh, it will create um, a traversal, an empty traversal that doesn't do anything. This is an empty traversal that takes an object and returns the same object. And then it will add to this empty traversal a project by step. And I did not have to repeat the implementation or anything. This project by extension method is the same as the project by uh, method that we defined here. So I just use the implementation that we already um, wrote before. And I use it to add uh, a project by step to this empty traversal. And then I return this, this traversal. And again, I created a second overload that does not require the caller to specify the type argument because very often you did not do you do not know the the type of the values of the dictionaries and so this overload just assumes that the type of the values of the dictionary will be object and again it calls the same implementations that we defined here and it will pass object as the type argument and will return the anonymous traversal so other than these two functions, these two project by overloads, I wanted to um, create a values function. Well, we all know the values, the standard values gremlin step that's used to get the value of one or more properties. But my problem with this value step, it requires a type argument. And again, when you are projecting, very often you do not, you do not um, it doesn't make sense to specify the type of the value you're getting because it will be treated as object anyway. So this is like a more concise version of the value step that will not require you to specify a type argument and will assume that the type of the value you're getting is an object. Okay, so this completes our DSL implementation now we have our dsl functions and all what we need to do is just call them from our program so i will create another function or i'll paste another function that gets the same post and the same comments but this time using our custom project by syntax And because project by is defined in the namespace gremlin extension so i'll need to use this namespace. And now you get to compare the syntax of the standard project with the syntax of our custom project function. So our custom project functions, it takes a dictionary of string and I traversal, and this dictionary has key value, uh, key, like a list of keys and values. The keys are the same as the keys we used to pass here. And the values, will be the traversal that specifies how to get the value uh, that goes under this key. And if, if the value will come from a property that has the same name as your key, you don't have to specify the pro you don't have to specify the value source. You don't have to repeat slug twice like we were doing before. You have to repeat slug once as the property key and once as the value source. Here you have to type it only once because the, the value will come from a property that has the same name. If the value will come from a property that has a different name, like for example, the value of writer will come from the author property, then you have to specify the traversal that, that, that is used to get the value. And again, um, project by can be used in nested traversal, right? like, like you see here. We have a common key, and the value that goes under the common key will come from this 
anonymous traversal. And inside the anonymous traversal, we used our project by function again, and it takes um, key value pairs. The keys are the projection keys, the values are the value sources. And again, we have to fold and we have to call the next terminal step. So let's try executing this function, see if it works the same as the standard project uh, syntax. So I'll call this function here, and again, we will inspect the projection results and see if, if we got the expected results. I'll run my program in debug mode. And we hit the breakpoints. Now let's see the projection results. Again, we have the key value pairs. These are the scalar properties. The idea is zero, the slug post one, the writer is over one. So um, we got all the scalar properties successfully. And now let's see the complex property, the comments property. Um, it has three dictionaries under it. Each of the dictionaries has the properties of the comment. ID 14, username, user 2, and the posted on date. So perfect, we got all the results successfully. Same as what we got from the standard project by. Okay, so in this video, I showed you how to uh, define a domain-specific language and how to use this domain-specific language from your c -sharp program. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it useful. I will upload this code to GitHub and I'll put a link to the to the GitHub repo in the in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. Please stay tuned for more graph database videos.